I used to play the trap spot, propped on the block like I was part of the backdrop. Now it's scale, props, effects, and backdrops. The right lighting, you never catch me biting. Say you make it look so real when well, you fold the biggest fighting. I caught lightning, stuck it in the detour. Replicate epic scenes from the pre war. Compose pieces with artists that span the globe. Fierce some foes, fighting in the picture perfect pose. Insert the comic book, cut out the shooter show. Oh, you ain't know? Yo, everybody know me. I made nerds cool, cooler like my man Zoe. Took the everyday display, gave it a spark. Welcome to articulated comic book art. That's crispy. Be nice to get these windigos done over at some point. Doubt that's going to happen. These things actually had a nice sculpt. It was just the articulation wasn't really fully functional and it just it just the articulation and wasn't good, you know. The heads don't move up and down well enough on the ball joint. Uh, the fact that they don't have any ankle pivot it really, really kills them. It'd be nice for them to actually round out Alpha Flight in a good way and do Puck Over, but I highly doubt that they'll do that. I don't know. Maybe. I can definitely see them doing more members of Alpha Flight. But if we'll get a redo on the puck, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, what's in the Bang! Messing around with a little something here. I just shot a little side dish episode uh, for a diorama that I received from uh, Flash from my man Mike, uh, aka Flashworks24. Uh, the end of this little alleyway here, uh, that brick wall with the door, and the wall to the left of that with the light shining through uh, was part of the package that I received from him, and also some rooftops um, and a and uh, quite a few different modular pieces. I'll show them momentarily, but you know, I'm always sitting on my little alleyways here. I got all the goons hanging out, what looks like, hanging out at what looks like maybe a social club or something, the back alley, back entrance to the social club. Uh, and I got some, the way he uh, built that, uh, that piece on the left, it's got like frosted windows, so you're able to shine some light through there. Probably make that a little brighter. Yeah, I'm not gonna know where I got that light from. That's like really bright, but yeah, just messing around here. I'm staging everything right now. I'll get the lighting right. I have to go with that hue of light, which is from like the really bright lights that I have from my light box. That thing just gets really hot. I'm afraid that it might melt something or damage the diorama because I tend to leave them on for really long, which I shouldn't do. Still playing with the lights. Yo, know, Figma is always coming through with nice little props. I don't know if you can really see if it's really showing up on camera, but I've got the uh, one of the cigarettes from the uh, Solid Snake figure in the guy's hand on the on the right wall, and I've got the uh, beer bottle from the Ted Two figure in his hand too. Just really going over all the intricate details of this one here. Gonna add in a lot of little Easter eggs, I guess. Playing with some different things here. Got all my goons in the background now. Kingpin and Bullseye in the foreground. Uh, messing around. Yeah, I think this came together nicely. Nice colors. I'm gonna snap a bunch of pictures, get some different colors going. But uh, this is three lights. Um, I got my one uh, desk lamp. That's that's a white light that has a, a shade on it. Um, then I have the red colored light. And then I've got the one light coming through the window in the back. So uh, this is sort of a, a closed uh, set, uh, except. This, this skyline is, is open for the light to come through and some light shining through that window but um, you could kind of control this pretty well being that it's uh, it's mostly enclosed but yeah I think this came out pretty good I did a lot of you know little unique things with each individual character I think that's really really important when you're trying to 
set up a scene like this is giving each character their own identity through posing. Sometimes, oftentimes, you'll see somebody who struggles with posing, they'll pose all the characters exactly the same and in a portrait style shot or any type of shot. It'll be all the same type of pose. And uh, you want to kind of avoid that. You know, you want to give, give, give each person their own identity, little things here, like, you know, Kingpin looking like a true boss how he's tilting his head right here you know I played with the head I could do different things and do it different ways but you know I think it's kind of like he's kind of like listening like yeah yeah you know I'm a boss and then you got Rhino and Hobgoblin in a different conversation over here and Rhino's cracking out you can see Scorpion looking like he's kind of scheming and trying to see what the joke is you got the guy with the mutton chops back there with the cigarette in his hand beer bottle Bullseye talking to the boss with the stack of money. Got Hammerhead and Chameleon and Jigsaw in the back talking. And, you know, I tried to give, uh, also try to uh, hide some of the faces of the goons if it looked, you know, specifically like whoever it's supposed to be. Uh, this guy on the left whose face is semi, uh, that you can see a little bit, that's actually the uh, movie Punisher. From the old Toy Biz Marvel Legends line, but he looks like a a pretty decent goon. And uh that's a Colson head on the guy whose back is turned. And uh yeah man, I think this came along pretty nice. One of those packages was a package from Big Bad Toy Store, obviously. I'm pretty sure it said Big Bad Toy Store on the box. But uh, it was my lore master here for Judge Dredd. I've had the Judge Dredd figure for quite some time. I never opened it. I've just been waiting all of this time to get the lore master. Finally got it. In that box, it was the lore master, and it was a couple of the creature packs from NECA for those, like, the pods for the face huggers or whatever. But... Um, really, really happy with the way this this uh, bike came out. It's very, very nice. Uh, as you can see, the lights has working lights. Um, uh, there's lights in the back. There's lights on like the uh, the dashboard. Uh, dread fits on there with no problem. The dread figure is great. You get like three sets of interchangeable hands. There's an extra pair of hands that come with the bike um, for gripping the uh, the handlebars here. And I just think this is a great piece. I never really planned on doing too much with it. I just really got it as just a display piece for my detolf. But of course, I got to get it in main course. I got to take some pictures of it regardless. Uh, you know, I'll get some shots of it from from the back and the side and all of that stuff too. But very happy with the way this came out. I would definitely recommend it. It's a little pricey, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's, I guess it's not that bad for what you get. It was about 125 bucks. The dread is about sixty bucks, seventy bucks, basically. So that's pretty pricey. I know there's a a three A version of dread and the lore master that's gonna come out, and you can get both of those for about a hundred and seventy five dollars, and that looks really nice too. I actually think the three A version might be a little more comic accurate. Mezco's version is just a little more stylized, I guess. Yeah, a couple of other things that you get is the uh, baton or the billy club you get a pair of working handcuffs this is with the dread figure i mean the bike just came with the extra hands for gripping the turnstile for, for gripping the uh the handlebars and uh i think that was all the accessories the bike came with that that was it um it's a working kickstand but the equilibrium of the bike is is fine you actually don't even need the kickstand it's, it stands up on its own fine which is very very good uh you know you get a lot of bikes and stuff and uh and you gotta finesse it with a stand or something like that to get it to have it upright and make it look like the person's riding on it but anyway yeah dre comes with the working handcuffs the baton the gun the knife the knife and the gun can be holstered on his boot the gun actually has a removable clip and you get an extra clip that he can uh, put on he comes with a couple of like i guess gas canisters which can be uh, hooked on the back of his belt so pretty much everything is working the two shoulder pads on him are uh, 
attached with magnets so you can remove them and there's a magnet and on the shoulders and there's also a magnet on the chest where the badge can go on uh, so you know like I said very very nice piece I gotta give props to Mezco for the bike and Dread and just so you can see the back the lights light up here in the back all the lights look good has a little sleep feature where after 15 minutes the lights will just turn off so you get up to 15 minutes of, of good light and they sent some decent batteries even though I switched them out for energizers or my girl did rather and uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that it rolls really really well too you can roll this thing across the floor if, if I was seven again I'd be I'd break this shit in 20 minutes because I'd be rolling it down the hallway and crashing it but uh, it rolls very very well well the tires are, are rubber um, and like I said it, it's, it has a good equilibrium and it'll, it'll stand up even what uh, dreads weight um, so really really nice piece just so you could get a close look at him off the bike he's got the baton in his hand you can see uh, well, I guess you probably can't but there's the gun on one side and the knife on the other and in the back you can see the two little grenades or gas canisters or whatever they're supposed to be Definitely a nice piece. I'm gonna put this in my uh, detolf. That'll be it for him. What's in the fucking box? Baggage. Taking a look at the Figma Max Factory Metal Gear Solid 2 Golokovic Soldier. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, but yeah, these came out really really nice. Uh, I got three of them. Uh, just trying to show you some of the little options here. It actually came with, all Figma figures come with a stand. Uh, they came with like a little magazine that you can have one of them reading when they're not paying attention. And uh, it came with like two like plastic parts where you can put uh, a decal or a stick of a question mark and a exclamation point over their head. I don't really like the, uh, the mechanics of how that works or how it looks. I would rather just have a cutout of a question mark or exclamation point. Maybe we should do that. But uh, yeah, I'm not, and and also came with one for uh, for if he's like sleeping and knocked out some Z's. Um, but you can see the one on the far right has the uh, alerted eyes for when they, I guess, when they see Solid Snake or he's been found. Uh, and then the one on the far left's got the the knife out. It does have a little holster for the knife on their right side, but you can't um, you can't sheath the knife. So that was really stupid. I thought that was dumb. But the deco. The design, the articulation, everything here is very, very nice. And finally, we got some uh, enemies for our Solid Snake to fight. I, I'm sure we'll see a lot of people using these up against Deadpool and and some other offerings from Figma, but um, or even just against Marvel Legends probably too. But these are some very, very nice enemy soldiers. Um, probably one of my only gripes is that you don't get more. Uh, articulation out of the upper torso due to to the vest but the design of the vest and everything is so nice it's, it's a very good looking uh, figure a little expensive they were about 60 60 bucks a piece probably a little bit more I think I paid like 226 shipped from Japan for the three so that's very pricey considering that you can get a full wave of Marvel Legends for about 160 <laughs> for almost half the price so that's that's a little steep so I was able to hit up a, a local Walgreens the other day I had got a little tip from my man Dave BX uh, that they had some punishes over there I called and had them hold one for me and they did so I was able to pick pick this guy up I picked up another Neymar as well I'm pretty happy with this Punisher but they did still kind of leave a little bit to be desired they you know you got to do a, a little couple things with it I want to get like three of these because I want to kit bash um, kit bash them in different ways. You can see I started doing some little things on this one already. I've got the the old series three or series four Toy Biz Marvel Legends Punisher boots on here. I was able to heat and pop the boots from the old one, and uh, I actually didn't even really have to heat the boots from this one. I was able to just pull one off. I did have to heat one. I I just did it with hot water though. Um, it took me a minute to get the old boots on there though it's a very tight fit um, but uh, but I do like the way they look and I was able to put the holster on 
his right leg here from one of the shield agents. I'll end up removing this harness from around the, the uh, chest and probably just going with the, the boots and the and the, um, the holster on the leg for one look. And I did try some of the other heads on this body. Uh, the most recent Hasbro head with a stubble beard looks pretty good. The head is just a little small though. But it's a lot of different looks you can do. I don't like that they didn't give them trigger fingers. I've seen some people take an X-Acto and, and just uh, separate the one trigger finger on both hands. So I'll probably try that on one. But, you know, definitely definitely a lot of options. I do like the body mold. I do like the figure. I mean, I've seen the figure long before now anyway at Toy Fair. So I knew it was going to be pretty good. The other head, though, the interchangeable head that comes with them is kind of iffy. I don't know about that. Quick little something right here. Like I said, I've been waiting for forever to get Solid Snake up against some some legit enemies here. And this is looking pretty good. I really, really do like the way that these uh, the soldiers came out, man. It's a perfect pairing. It's a perfect matchup here. So here's sort of a look at the two building top dioramas that I got from my man Flash. And, um, you know, this one that Spider-Man is sticking to it's probably about five inches tall and the one that venom is on is probably about eight inches tall and the chimney and that little heating unit or cooling unit or whatever that thing is supposed to be they're both mod modular pieces they can both move you know like i said i put a video up on my channel kind of detailing everything so if you didn't check that out you should um but this is part of a a larger plan i'm going to be getting another diorama from my man Al Figures. He's putting his motherfucking foot into that into that dial. And um, this is all part of a, a big plan to get on my rooftop situated for when the articulated icons and then just drop and, and really do something extravagant. But uh but I, I really do like the way these these pieces came out from Flash. A lot of different possibilities. I mean, just like with every diorama, I mean, you, you, as long as you have a creative mind, you'll never run out of ideas and angles and options and, and what have you. This is a two light setup. I got my shaded white light um, a little bit above the, uh, the buildings here, and I got the red light focus more so on the building that Venom is on. And well, there's also some light coming from that moon back there. I've used that a couple of times uh, in main course. And I came from Toys R Us. And just layers here, just some layers and and two lights or three lights basically. But all the lights are pretty much on the on the left side. But again, you just got to keep playing with your angles, playing with your lights. I hope this shows up all right. I done messed up the cutout. I was being lazy instead of laying down the cutout to rim it with the. Sharpie, I was just holding it and hitting it with the side of the Sharpie and scuffed up that right bottom right corner. So I figured I'd cover it with Spidey's head a little bit just so I could get this shot. Changed it from the red light into the blue, just cycling through, taking some pictures. Switched it up, going for a nighttime shot now. I got the three lights set up. My shaded lamp is up on the chair. It's not really shining directly onto the scene. Uh, then I got a colored light for a little highlight, a little greenish hue going right now. And now I got one light directly on the uh, the muzzle flare just to make that pop. And just so you can see, black felt in the back. I've got the, uh, <laughs> I actually got the moon propped up with a flight stand, with an old flight stand from my man Junior. When Junior was first making the flight stands, uh, it had like two prongs, uh, sort of like, almost like a hook. And it was able to hook right into the back of the st back of the uh, the moon, and one of the little groove, two of the little grooves back there, and I hold it up right, and I got it propped up on a couple boxes back there. Again, it's just about the layers. You see, it's just layers upon layers here. But when you zoom in at the right angle, you can you got something special. Yeah, just so you can see that alternate face that came with them, you know. I don't really like this one too much. It's not terrible, but it's just not really that menacing Punisher look. He looks real metrosexual to me. Just a closer look at the boots. You see those work 
pretty well. And this holster, like I said, was from one of the Shield agents. Those are the original boots that came on the figure. Like I said, these popped off with no problem. And there's a Series 4 Punisher. You know, nothing got damaged. If I want to put it back, I can. I had two of these anyway. Probably wouldn't have did it if I didn't have two, but you know, I keep doubles or triples or just about everything, just in the event that I want to get bash something. And there he is with the epic hero's head and without the uh, the chest harness. Unfortunately, the Series 4 head doesn't just fit right on there. You would have to dremel this out a little bit. I don't know that I feel like... Damn it. I don't know that I feel like dremeling that head, uh, especially because that head is even smaller than the epic hero's head and that one can just pop right on by the way and I think this head is just a little small so being that the other one is even smaller I don't know if it would look right as far as the proportions go and then there he is back with the Jim Lee head shout out to my man Darius came through with the uh, SDCC Broly in the background here uh, they give him a little upgrade made them more accurate to the anime colors with the hair and even the skin tone they changed a bit otherwise they're not it's pretty much the same the same figure um took me a minute to even get this from Darius I wasn't really worried about it I wasn't thirst you know he copped it for me while he was out there and I told him to just bring it back with him on the plane and take his time and then even when he got here to New York it took a couple of a couple of weeks for us to even hook, hook up so he just um Ended up just mailing it over, so shout out to my man Darius. Um, these two little uh, rock pieces are actually modular pieces that um, that uh, my man flashed through him with the with the dial too. So you know that could he could easily give uh, your your displays a little more a little more life, a little more options. So you know I can move these around. And yeah, do I talked about things. this while I was on the podcast. I was pre posing these figures. This is strictly an exercise and just some relaxed posing. And I kind of went with like a little old school feel here with the classic Wolverine, classic Daredevil, classic Punisher. Um, three figures that I really, really like right now, especially Wolverine. Uh, you know, I like this Punisher for the options. But these two little uh, pieces in the back are some more the modular pieces that I got. Uh, from Flash, uh, so obviously they could be moved and used in different ways. But again, this was just some um, an exercise and some really relaxed posing and a little sort of team, maybe sort of cover style shot or something. I'm just just posing and just cycling through things. Just some more simple posing, taking the time. You know, I really got a hop cop and grasping. J. Jonah Jameson's neck. His hand is completely around his neck. And holding his other hand. J.J. really looking like he's at the mercy of the thugs. A little line of sight. Everybody's line of sight is on point. Packages! So those two packages were a package from my man A. Out on Cali. That was my, uh, finally got my SDCC 2016 Raft box set, the Marvel Legends Raft set. So this is the Spider-Man from the set, uh, which is basically the pizza spotty mold with a darker blue and a different head sculpt. People are calling it the McFarlane style head sculpt. I honestly don't really like the way the head sculpt looks that much. The eyes look a little weird. They, they might be a little too big and just misplaced and a little misshapen I'm not sure but I mean it looks okay right here but so I got the uh, how many figures was it one two three four five six figures including Spidey here I'll get around to the rest of them obviously in this episode and then I got package one of two from my man Al figures with this huge diorama that he built for me and um, package one came today I don't know why they didn't come together maybe he didn't send a bigger package yet. I don't know but package one came today and it had this water tower in it he didn't build this water tower this is actually from my people over at um, 
boundless Brooklyn and I had ordered this water tower and sent it to Al to have him paint it up and weather it and, and do his thing while he was uh, building a diorama for me. So this came and a couple of other random parts for the diorama, which you'll see in this episode. I'm excited to really get into that. It's a huge piece and it's a lot of possibilities with that. But yeah, still working with Flash's diorama here in the front, the building and doing just a little more layering, just, just getting back into the groove of things. Today was a really long day, had a lot going on. I'm not even sure how this is showing up, but I'm thinking I'm going to do something for the White Hot Challenge that's going on right now on Instagram. Uh, so, yeah. Shout out to Big Bad Toy Store. They sent me over Cable and, uh, and Kitty Pride. I'm actually still waiting for the ACBA shop. ACBA shop to get uh to get their cases of the X Men wave and it seems like retailers, online retailers are the last people to get these cases right now. I don't know what's up. I don't know what's taking so long, but I've been slowly getting figures here and there. I was tempted to actually get Iceman and Havoc today and Toys R Us, but I, I just I keep trying to be patient. And, um, yeah, we just started shipping the Abomination Wave this, this week. Probably, I'm sure by the time this goes live, all of those cases will be gone. But, um, but yeah, I like Cable is really nice. I like them a lot. Like everybody has said, could have just used a little bit, maybe black wash, a little bit of more detailing. But the figure is really, really nice. And uh, you see a lot of people pairing Deadpool and Cable up together because you know they know that to be a a classic. Yeah, they know that to be a classic team up. But I don't know that Cable and Deadpool really teamed up with Cable in this particular um, get up. This is what he was uh, sporting during the X Sanction storyline where he was like fighting the Avengers and the X Men because they were trying to like kill hope basically if i'm not mistaken i don't know that Deadpool and cable kind of teamed up during this time but it is what it is just messing with the white balance on the camera switching it up a little bit just seeing what's showing up good as far as video but i'm gonna start snapping some shots i think uh i got a little mash up here the the contest that we run in is the ACBA Summer Shots 2016 competition. So it's three hashtags that you could submit under. Uh, one of them is uh, ACBA underscore wipeout, which has to do with water. You know, you have to have some type of water and a display, whether it's simulated or actual real world water. And then there's also the uh, ACBA. Um, uh, white hot challenge which has to be a white backdrop basically it's supposed to be mostly mostly white you don't necessarily need a diorama but uh, the idea is for a very white bright infinite backdrop and then there's also ACBA underscore web heads web as in W-E-B-B -B, as a tribute to the late Glenn Webb and uh, that's just basically Spider-Man themed or any Spider-Man characters. So I got like a a three right here. I got my water tower. I got the Spidey characters. I got the white backdrop. Boom. Man, I don't know where my uh, battery life is, but I've been setting this up for a little minute here. I've I got in my uh, my dial from from Al. Someone that's here on the, on the right that you're not going to be able to see. There's so many layers to this thing and so many possibilities. I mean, from the smallest little thing that you can use it for, uh, you know, to it being completely built up and in its full glory. And even at that state, you're not going to be able to shoot it all or shoot every aspect of it. I mean, there's so many modular pieces and so many different things for you to do with this and break it down. I mean, there's, there's so many possibilities, but... um. I'm still on my on my city skyline shit basically, so I'm trying to set this up. But you know, this is a lot of space here. Um, but I'm trying to get it in frame where it's just the uh, 
just just so the backdrop is good. I'm gonna have to cover the building in the far left, the in the interior, so you can't see through it. But working it out. Finally, put the uh, stickers on this little bottle that came with the tattoo figure. I haven't shot that figure at all <laughs> in main course, but I've used this bottle two times already. Um, just kind of got Wolverine chilling on a roof. I uh, I recently got this uh, this uh, casted head from a uh, uh, sculptor's shelf. I forget the guy's name. Uh, well, in the next segment, I'll say what his his name is. But this this uh, this head cast is is freaking amazing. Still trying to figure out who I'm gonna get to uh, paint it. But it's an unmasked Wolverine head with a little cigar. The cigar is removable. Uh, this cast is uh, freaking amazing, man. Shout out to my man, Alex Garcia. Um, I got this back pretty fast. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I saw um, Farrell's uh, version. He painted a, ver a version for Farrell first. I saw a bunch of people painting them. It was, it was a few people that was actually doing really good jobs. But, um, but I decided to send mine to Alex, and he definitely did a great job. I like the way this came out. I'm hoping it's showing up pretty well on here, but I think everything looks real clean, real nice. So just so you can see the piece sort of in its full glory, not really. I mean, this is, uh, it's so many possibilities, like I keep saying with this thing. Everything is pretty much modular. Um, if you want to see how to how it uh, actually pieces together, it's mostly with magnets and stuff. But if you want to see a full breakdown of the piece, then you should um, check the link in the description. There'll be a link to our figures uh, video showcasing the entire thing. We thought we'd do it like that as sort of like a dual video, so you know people can run uh, go over to his channel and see it and then see me just kind of use it in some different displays so I'm not going to go over every single little detail and aspect of the diorama you should definitely check out our figures uh, channel because he'll be able to explain it a bit better but I'm going to show uh, you know a, a good amount of possibilities uh, with and the, just uh, so you can see the opposite side all right I'm gonna start breaking it down and just getting into some different displays and continuing on with the episode so I got it broken down here. I'm just in the uh, inner lower level and uh, got the camera cropped in here. I'm just showing you that, you know, from every little small aspect of this thing, you can do so many different things. You know, obviously this is a huge diorama, but again, I'm just in one little corner <laughs> of the display. I'm um, just showing you some of the details here. Uh, the windows can actually go up and down and uh, I love the way he did the inside of the window I love the texture here on the walls it's sort of like um, I don't even know what to what that material is <laughs> but but the texture of it looks really authentic um, and it's panels around the lower portion of the wall I like that he did the the brick inside here there's three windows here on the inside I'll pull back the camera in a second and and show you what's what. Just got a couple flames outside the window and an orange backdrop. Some real bright lights on the fly on the fire. I wanted the fire to show up on uh, uh kind of glowing on cable and Deadpool here. Just taking some shots, just getting back into the groove of things. Um, so yeah, man. Yeah, so you can see the scale, three windows. Uh, the, again, you know, I'm just going to keep reiterating this, but the fact that there are so many possibilities because everything is modular. Uh, you know, I was impressed with just this floor alone. The wooden floor looks great. Uh, you know, the foam looks like wood. I could take all of these walls down and just use the floor for a different type of base for a different diorama. Um, you know, again, it's just so many possibilities. That's a little dark room shot here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep saying this a million times, but, you know, this uh, diorama that I got from Al, so many, so many possibilities. I have the... Uh, the little uh, floor great thing that he made to lead up to the rooftop which has a mesh um, base uh, so I'm able to shine light up through the mesh base I'm actually you know, don't even have it directly I don't have the light directly under it right now but I'm charging my batteries for my other light to do something else um, 
and um, I'm just testing this out. I want to get some shots of Dread Knight here. I think this was the sleeper figure of the SDCC 2016 Raft set. I think this was probably the best figure in the set. He just came out real clean. It's the base of the, um, the um, what you call that, Baron Zemo base uh, with the cape from, I don't know, somebody. But, you know, he's got the lance and the sword, and he's just he just looks good, man. He just looks real good. So I thought I'd get some dark room shots with him. And just so you can see, it's kind of bright right here, but this is pretty basic. I only have two lights. I got the colored light shining above. I got one small light here on the floor shining on him. And a black piece of felt back there. And that's it. Uh, you know, you completely, completely dark the room as long as you have a good amount of space between your, your felt backdrop and your subject, you should be able to get a nice, clean, and dark room. And here's a better shot. look at that little uh, graded platform. So obviously this is great for shining light through the bottom and really getting a dramatic look for pictures. So this was another nice little modular piece for the... You might have to diamond. lower the exposure a little bit on the, on your camera. This might be showing up kind of bright, but I think my pictures was coming out pretty spot on. Purple Man came out pretty good too, but um, like most of the figures in the uh, in the set, there was some QC issues, and this guy, I feel like his torso is a little defective. You can kind of get it all the way back to three as far as hyper extending the, the torso and it's fine that it'll stay but when you have it at like two it's it's kind of wobbly it's kind of loose and I feel like you know keep going with the back and forth and that thing's probably gonna break after some time but um, this is probably one that's not gonna get re-released in any capacity so it's one that I'm definitely gonna be uh, a bit more delicate with and not not do too much with you know the suit is is pretty unique you're not gonna get this color scheme as far as the shirt and tie and suit again so uh, and um, you know you definitely not gonna be able to match the purple well I won't because I won't be trying to paint shit uh, you know as far as trying to swap this head on different suited bodies and I'm not going through all of that so yeah I do like them though you know I got them here the chicks like they mesmerized or what have you but yeah Working on a little something here in the exterior, in the interior, excuse me. Um, I don't think I filmed any of those other shots that I just saw. I was just kind of scrolling st through stuff, but I used uh, <clears throat> for the shots with uh, Abomination and Purple Man, I used a different modular um, piece that I think my man JD made, Paid Samurai. And, uh, you know, as you can see, I like to mix and match with the different dial pieces and do different things. That's something I've done before with the hold into another uh, building or another <coughs> apartment or something like that. But um, working on something a little dynamic here. Got Kitty and Wolverine going to town on some, some goons. A little more progress here. Just added the red light just for a little accent. Just make the pictures pop a little bit. Got Deadpool peeking through the window back there. It's got a package. I don't know what happened to the box. I was screaming out package, but it was uh, the SH Figure Arts Black Widow and um, the uh, SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Whis figure, which I guess I'll show shortly. <clears throat> um, and uh, I shot a review for this figure actually too. So if you want to hear the intricacies and the details about this figure, then check out the review. Uh, but real quick, I think she came out pretty good. I think the face probably could have been just a tad bit better. I have a uh, a minor gripe with the way the uh, the chest from the bust line up to about the collarbone and up through the neck and the face is sort of like a different uh, texture and color. And uh, but other than that, she has a good amount of interchangeable parts and a lot of articulation. So. She is pretty decent. Just testing out some different figures, different light, snapping some shots, broke out the Phasma and the Kylo Ren, SH Figure Arts. I'm in a 
in a festive mood. <laughs> Tomorrow's Force Friday. Figured I'd mess around with some Star Wars stuff. I didn't really, really get to mess with the figure watch stuff too tough. You know, I did a lot of vanilla stuff. I didn't really get to dig in and do too much. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to get into quite a few different Star Wars things over the next 24, 48 hours. Got the, uh, the uh, prequel, some prequel action going on here. Actually watching um, The Force Awakens in the background right now too. I'm pretty happy with the framework of this so far. Just got to cover the stand for that troop that's getting blown back. And uh, put the lights on. I got my light positioned for the explosion. So that'll look really nice once we get that situated. <clears throat> and the way the light is flashing on um, Mace and the trooper. I think this is going to come out real clean. A little more progress. Not really looking forward to anything coming out right now from Star Wars Black Series. I did see like a little uh, Jin Erso figure that had like a rock base. I just saw my man Al, Al Chang post about it. And uh, getting a couple of those for just a little rocky base would be cool. But I don't know, man. Star Wars Black Series is not really wowing me. They're not really getting any better. They're not really doing anything innovative. And you think, you know, being that they from Hasbro, they'd be stepping it up like legends. But they're not really doing nothing out, out, out of the norm. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to pick and choose with the, with the imports and mix and match some different things as far as the imports go. Um, definitely looking forward to some of the Rogue One stuff from SH Figure Arts for sure, especially that uh, the Death Trooper looks looks very very good. went on the quickest Comic-Con run ever. <laughs> I just went in Comic-Con, got a whole bunch of stuff that I needed, and I'm bouncing. I gotta go back to work. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man, it's starting to get real crowded. I got here right before it uh, opened up and, um, and went in with my man Emia. I didn't even have a ticket. I had no tickets this year, but of course, I'm the finesse master. So, got in, got everything I needed. You dig? And I'm out. Boom. So I was able to get Raphael on an early release from uh, New York Comic Con, and then Leonardo and Donatello came in the mail from Entertainment Earth. So shout out to the good folks on Entertainment on my Earth. On way down to uh, Comic Con, I had to stop at the post office and uh, picked up a couple of Django Fets that were there for like a week. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I ordered two of them, and I'm pretty happy with the figure, man. I like the figure. There are a little, couple of little quality control issues or whatever, but I think the figure looks dope. I think it's clean. I think, uh, you know, it's clean and it's dirty in the right places. It's got some little weathering and some little smudges and stuff on the armor. Looks a little battle damaged. Looks like he's been into a couple scuffles. So a quick group shot. Minus Michelangelo, who's supposed to drop in um, December, if I'm not mistaken. But they do look pretty good together. Um, not bad. This is all. Each one of them has the uh, <clears throat> alternate head on right now. The smiling faces. They all have regular smug looks <laughs> as well. And uh, not Taking bad. a look at Whis. And, uh, man, I've been catching up on, on my DBZ. Dragon Ball Super episodes. I'm actually about to watch the latest episode, which is 62, shortly. And uh, I think this figure came out great. I think it came out spot on. I think it looks wonderful. It has pretty nice articulation, considering he's got on a, a dress or, <laughs> or whatever this thing is uh, supposed to be. Uh, you know, it's still very well articulated. He's got uh, maybe two 
three sets of interchangeable hands and he's got his uh, this little staff here and he looks great alongside Beerus and they both look spot on to the show and I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with with the way this guy came out man I'm, I'm looking forward to them doing Champa and uh, Vados uh, if you're not up on the show they are like I guess you could say like the counterparts to Whis and Beerus they have the, the god of destruction and the attendant from another universe basically and I'm liking what Dragon Ball Super has been doing man with expanding the, the universe and taking it to some new places and exploring some new things with uh, Goku's powers and the powers of the Saiyans and what have you and showing the, the hierarchy of, of the uh, the system and in, in, uh, in that world basically in the world of Dragon Ball Z so pretty cool I think this figure is dope if you weren't able to get this figure it's gonna be a little more pricey and harder to get now because I believe this was a web shop exclusive and uh, yeah and here's one of the uh, dumpsters that uh, I got from wrestling superstore that I had originally sent to Al figures and uh, you know he painted it up a little bit this is one of two I'll show the other one too but these are great for some um, alleyway props or some background props but you know they're working dumpsters they do they do work well and then also had a blue one we put up a bunch of uh, graffiti on this one just names of some of the people that I really really fuck with in the community uh, a lot of people that I've actually met and hung with uh, as you can see Ty on there I'll put his name up there slangs my man Ja uh, there's a bunch of names on the side and stuff too so that was cool they showed a couple of new things at New York Comic Con. Still a lot of people waiting for some of the uh, classic characters to get made. They, they did show uh, Tien and Yamcha, but Yamcha didn't look that <laughs> look that good. His legs look kind of kind of janky, so I'm not sure what's up with that. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure what the schedule is for releasing stuff or, or what the, the science is behind how they release stuff. But they had showed some figures from... The Dragon Ball Z video game. I think like some Xenoverse video game. I've never played any of the Dragon Ball Z games. Um, although they do look a bit intriguing. They look interesting. Um, I haven't been playing video games at all in a, in a really long time. I just haven't really been on it. Even though we do have a bunch of video games here. But it is what it is. So not really sure what, they, what they're doing. What's the direction. It's, it seems kind of willy-nilly with how they put out figures with... Uh, the SHF uh, DBZ line, but uh, but the figures have been good and they have been consistently upgrading the molds and and trying to do better, which which uh, leads me into uh, uh, Vegeta. I got the early release of Vegeta, which I'll show shortly. Uh, there's Vegeta. I'm pretty happy with the way this figure came out. I'm gonna really get into it in the next episode. I'm kind of running out of time here, um, but I was a little disappointed that you can't swap the head. Uh, from the uh, previous Vegeta's with this one, but the figure's clean. I like that it matches up with the uh, last trunks that they put out, and the new articulation scheme here and the lower body is is very good. But... Mm, I don't know what I'm doing. I broke up the uh, Mark Forty Three Iron Man Forty Two Forty Three. I think this is Forty Three SH Trigger Watch. Just messing with these uh, soldiers a bit more. Um, they're such great goons for pretty much anything. There we go. Some good light. I got a light above directly on the muscle flare again. And then my bright light right under the explosives. I think they're showing up pretty good. Pretty good framing. If I could score two more soldiers for the low, I will. But they're a little too pricey uh, right now. I can't really justify it. Um, it's not even about affording it, but it's just it's silly to army build at that at that price, in my opinion. Um, but if I could get two more for the low, then I will. I'll be okay with five. I'm okay with three, but five would be better. <laughs> so that was a package from uh, from Japan. It was the Mafex armored Batman. And yo, I, I almost actually didn't even, I almost let this one go. I was just going to let it, uh, the time expire and not pay for it because I was concerned that the uh, armor is a little small in comparison to the Mezco one and in comparison to the 
Mafex Batman from this same movie. And I've actually only seen reviews. I broke this out immediately and started setting this up because I'm pressed for a little bit of time trying to finish up this, this episode. But I actually haven't even compared them myself yet. But from what I understand, this is not that much bigger than the regular Batman uh, from the same line. Which is kind of stupid. You know, obviously this should be a tad bit bigger. And a, maybe a little bit bigger than Su Superman too. Um, but I am happy with the figure overall. I really do like the articulation. I like the uh, the uh, details. I like that it is pretty accurate to the movie. I wish that the uh, the armor parts were a little darker though. And there's a pretty decent look. I mean, it is still dark, but pretty decent look at the at him in his full glory, I guess. Um, I really do like the articulation on this for a, a bulky, armored up Batman. It moves very, very well. Um, I, and I, I like the overall design, man. I, I really do. Um, I haven't had the Mezco version in hand, but I think that one is pretty nice, too. Just I, I know for certain it doesn't move as well as this one, though. I really didn't even try to watch BVS after I saw it the one time in the movie. I was just so disappointed with the movie. But looking at some of the scenes after the fact, looking at it in 1080p and all of that, uh, it was actually some pretty pretty decent action. And it looked it looked pretty decent up until the, the end where the CGI was a little choppy. I really do like the scene where uh, Superman kind of just pushed Batman. Um, I think they did a pretty good job of displaying the power sets and what have you. So listen, I'm wrapping up this episode. This is the 99th episode of Main Course. I'm really, really proud of that milestone. So obviously the next episode 100 is going to be an extra special episode. Um, actually, before I talk about that, I want to talk about something real quick. My coworker, one of my coworkers, uh, his name is John. He was uh, diagnosed with testicular cancer a couple weeks ago. And he had to go into the hospital. They had to remove one of his testicles and um the cancer actually ended up spreading to like his lower stomach and now he's got to go through chemo and this and that and so um i'm just trying to make my audience aware that he has a a gofundme going to help pay for uh his treatment and you know i'm not asking for people to donate crazy money i know you guys don't know anything about him but i just felt like um, it was a good opportunity for me to use my platform and my audience to, to do something good uh, for somebody that I know that I fuck with, you know. Um, so, I mean, listen, I got almost 12,000 uh, followers. If just a small percentage of the people that follow me or that even watch this video, just throw down a dollar for my man, John, that would be tremendous. And so, you know, like I said, I just felt that that would be a good way to, to spread the, the word a little bit about this. He has a, uh, I'm going to link the GoFundMe in the, uh, in the underbar of this video, but also he has a YouTube and a couple of videos up, uh, you know, um, detailing or highlighting the, the journey of the whole cancer treatment and what have you. So you can actually look at it. You know, everything is, is legit. This is somebody that I work uh, closely with. And, um, and basically one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because, uh, one, my audience is, is full of men. And this is something for, you know, anybody who's between the age of like 18 to like 35. I'm not sure of the exact numbers for, uh, for, for when you should really be watching out for t testicular cancer. But, you know, most of my audience is men. You guys should be keeping up with your health and, and checking, checking your testicles and making sure everything is, is good. Um, but this is something that hits close to home because it's a, a story that I never re really even shared before, um, uh, publicly. But when I was like, uh, I guess I was probably like 23 or 24, um, maybe I might've been 25. I had like a, a small mass in my, in my scrotum and I didn't even go to the hospital, uh, 
or you know get it checked out immediately as as men and especially as as black men we tend to let shit go uh you know for a long time we don't go to the doctor you know we 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 do dumb shit and i didn't even go in immediately i was i was scared to death but um i ended up going in you know i, I ended up telling my mom and and whatever and i ended up going in and it, it didn't turn out to be cancer it was just um like a fluid build up and it wasn't actually attached to my testicles it was just in my scrotum but i had to have a surgery uh to have it removed and it was a long recovery process and whatever the case may be so this is a lesson to people out there like listen don't take your health for granted get out there get checked make sure you checking yourself out on a daily and making sure everything is is good down there but you know i just want to do this for my man john and uh if you know if you if you want to donate you know throw down something for my man john so you could get his uh get his chemotherapy uh paid for you could read the whole the whole uh description and the uh and the gofundme or what have you but i thought i would dedicate a small portion of this uh of this video for for john and and, and get the word out there so um yeah check that out in underbar please if you watch this video i'm sure this is going to be uh a, a, a highly watched video i haven't put out a main course in a while so you know if, if the least you could do is just throw down a dollar that would be so amazing. yeah moving on uh talking about the 100th episode i got a lot of things that i want to do in the next op episode a lot of little milestones for my uh collection and for main course and just for the evolution of of the channel and what i've been doing here and um and, and so i'm really looking forward to to shooting that video i got a, a bunch of things already on deck as far as figures and new things that i'm going to show for the first time uh in main course and the next uh, uh main course but i also wanted to do like a little q a session throughout the next episode so in the uh in the uh comments of this video if you have any questions for me or things that you want to know it could be directly related to main course or collecting or just about real life shit it don't matter like you know i'm gonna just literally just chop it up the entire video as i go through displays and go through the different figures that i want to i want to show i'll be answering those questions and and just talking about about stuff in the next video so if you have any questions that you want to ask me uh you've been tuning in for a long time but you never really comment or you always comment or whatever the case may be put a question in the in the uh in this uh um comment section of this video and uh, and i'll definitely get to it and and uh and main course 100 so i'm looking forward uh to the next video this iron fist i picked up right at the end of this and uh today actually as i'm shooting this i picked this up today from true and uh and yeah man thanks for tuning in thanks for watching uh thanks in advance to anybody who throws throws down something for my man uh john's uh donation uh for his gofundme and i'll see y'all in another month or so with episode 100 all right Peace. That's crispy.